This video will explain the basics of the edge detection algorithm and some of the common parameter settings that are found in all the edge-based tools on the CVX series machine vision system. Understanding how the edge algorithm works is helpful when setting up the tools that involve edges. Let us start with what an edge is. In machine vision, an edge is a border that separates a bright area from a dark area on the image. The edge tool is going to be set to detect dark to light transitions, light to dark transitions, or both. The first step in the edge detection process is called projection processing. Basically, the tool will calculate the average intensity of the pixels perpendicular to the set scan direction. In this picture, the scan direction is left to right, so the pixels in the vertical columns will be averaged inside the inspection region. The next step in the edge process is to perform differential processing. This will calculate the absolute differences in intensities on the projected waveform obtained from step one. The difference in intensity that is calculated is known as the edge strength. The higher the difference, the bigger the edge strength. Edge strength will range from zero, which is no change at all, to 255, which is the biggest change possible, going from complete 255 white to zero being black. The third step in the edge detection process is the normalization of edge strength values. Basically what this means is the biggest change of intensity detected is normalized to 100%, and all the other edge values are also normalized based off this value as a percentage of the biggest edge. This helps stabilize the edge detection as the maximum deviation in intensity is always maintained at 100%, no matter if the overall image gets darker or lighter. Only edges that pass a threshold called the edge sensitivity percentage, which is a setting in all the edge tools, will be detected as a valid edge. The actual detected edge is the peak point calculated from the normalized differential edge waveform. The edge value is calculated to the thousandth of a pixel level, which is known as sub-pixel processing. Now that you understand how the edge process works, let us go over some of the common settings that you will see in all the edge-based tools. Scan direction is a common detection condition that is the direction for which to scan for edges. It is perpendicular to the edges themselves. It can be set for scan from left to right, right to left, or you can also set it top to bottom or bottom to top. So depending on the application, you set the desired detection direction. When setting up these detection conditions in the edge tools, the edge waveform graph will be displayed next to the inspection region. This is very helpful when setting up the parameters. The peak edge strength, is, is, which is the biggest change of intensity, will be displayed in the upper left corner. This is the value that represents 100% when the edges are normalized. The other number that's displayed here next to the inspection region will depend on the tool. In this case, it's in the position of this edge. If you're using a rotated rectangle as your inspection region, the scan direction will be set to either forward, which is the direction of the arrow of the rotated rectangle, or reverse, which will reverse the direction. If you need to change the direction of scan, just simply rotate the rectangle according to the application. If you are using a ring or arc type inspection region, the scan direction will be set as clockwise or counterclockwise, and it will scan in that direction and look for an angular type edge. It will start at what is called the start angle, which is the line indicated here in red. That can be changed under detection conditions in the details. As a default, it's set for zero degrees, which is three o'clock, as you can see here. If you need to change that, you can change that accordingly. Just enter the angle. In this case, we've entered 90. So it will start here and scan for the edges. In this case, it's going clockwise until it finds the first edge. Edge direction is another common detection condition amongst the edge tools. If it is set for both, it will detect both light to dark changes and dark to light changes. You can also specify specifically if you want just light to dark only, as you can see here. So now it's only detecting where there's a light to dark transition, or dark to light, where it'll only look for dark to light changes. So you can set that according to the application. Edge sensitivity is probably the most important detection setting with the edge-based tools. This is the threshold that dictates what an edge is. The setting is it a percentage of the biggest edge. As a default, it is set for 30. So for any edge to be detected, it needs to be at least 30% of whatever the biggest edge strength is.
In this example, you can see the biggest edge detected is 250.9 change of contrast. As you can see, it's indicated by the graph. When you click on the edge sensitivity setting, the line on the graph will turn orange. This line right here represents the edge sensitivity. This can be adjusted as needed. In this example, if you wanted to pick up on this you know, smaller contrast edge, as you can see here, it doesn't quite cross the edge sensitivity threshold. So what we can do is we can lower this setting. In this example, I will lower it to 10%. As you can see, with it lowered to 10%, this smaller peak has been reached, and we've detected this edge setting. Uh, most, in most general applications, the edge sensitivity can be left at 30, but it'll depend on the contrast that you're receiving on the actual part. Another common edge detection condition is called edge filter width. This is generally found under the detection conditions and the detailed settings. As a default, this is set for 5. Basically what this setting does is it performs some averaging on the edge graph, as you can see here, to eliminate noise. You can raise this number higher so it performs more averaging, or in this example we can actually lower it and perform less averaging and make it more sensitive to pick up on the edges. Generally, this setting doesn't usually need to be adjusted, but can be adjusted depending on the application. Here's one more example of the edge filter width setting. In this example, you can see we're scanning from right to left here, and it's more of a gradual edge, so it's not even picking up any edges, even if we set this edge sensitivity lower here because of that more gradual change and the built-in averaging of 5. So what we can do is we can raise this averaging, and I'll raise it to about 50 here. You can see we add more averaging in, we're able to get an edge detection, and it's kind of more of an, basically an average edge in that area, but with that more averaging we're able to pick up that, on that edge. Finally, another common detection condition for the edge tools is called lower edge intensity. This is found in the detailed settings for detection conditions. Basically what this is is a low edge intensity filter uh, based off the raw edge strength. So basically uh, the default set for 5 so it will cut out any edges that are less than a change in 5 in contrast. In this example here you can see we have some noise that we're picking up on as edges and uh, when we don't really want to. So of course one way to get rid of unwanted edges is to of course change the edge sensitivity, make that higher. That's certainly still one way to do it. But what you can also do is adjust what's called the lower edge intensity. So if I want to cut out some of these low level edges that have lower contrast, I can just simply raise this number up to whatever number is appropriate. In this case, it's set for 40. You can see that line raised up and cut out all the edges that are less, to, less than 40 in contrast. So basically, it's a cut filter. Any edge strength that's 40 or less will be cut out of the picture and not even counted. So you can adjust that as needed for the application. So just to summarize these detailed edge sensitivity settings, for an edge to be an edge, it has to first pass the lower edge intensity filter. In other words, it has to be at least a change in contrast of the number that's set here. And it also has to pass the edge sensitivity threshold, uh, always indicated on these graphs, by the way. So any edge that passes both those lines becomes an edge. The edge filter width can be used to perform averaging. And again, the edge graph is your friend, so that'll always tell you the story. So when you're setting up the edge sensitivity settings on any edge tool, the edge graph will tell you the story. So take a look at that graph and set your settings to the optimum levels.